Hi there, it's Rob from Octopus. Welcome to the Octopus Deploy 2021 Q2 release. This is our second release of 2021, and I'm thrilled to share it with you. In this release, we've added a number of updates to help teams move to the cloud. We talked to a lot of development and operations teams, and most are shifting some of their infrastructure and applications to the cloud, like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. Some teams are further along this journey than others, with some working in a hybrid or a multi-cloud environment. The good news is that Octopus can help make this happen more smoothly. Octopus 2021 Q2 includes a self-service migration path from Octopus Server On-Prem to Octopus Cloud. New cloud integrations for GitHub Actions and Microsoft Azure App Services and finally, improved storage and scalability options for Octopus Cloud. Check the description for a link to the release blog post for all the details. In this video, we'll take a closer look at how we can migrate an on-prem Octopus project, deploying a web app to Microsoft's IIS web server, to Octopus Cloud and an Azure app service. Let's get started. I have a local Octopus instance running on my laptop. And this is an on-prem installation of Octopus Server. This is running on a couple of virtual machines, one for the Octopus Server itself, and another one which represents my dev test and production environments. In a real world scenario, you'd have a collection of servers that represent dev test and production, but for the simple scenario, I've got one that represents everything. This is running on-prem and thousands of our customers use this approach as well. However, numerous are looking to shift to the cloud, both in terms of their applications and infrastructure. One pain point we've heard from our customers is they're trying to get rid of that one last VM. And often that's to host their build server like TeamCity or Octopus. We've noticed that teams and companies are migrating to the cloud. This can be in a hybrid environment where they have a mix of both on-prem and public cloud, or it could be multi-cloud where they're taking advantage of multiple cloud providers. The benefit of moving to the cloud can include cost savings, improved scalability, and an ability to focus on their core business, which often doesn't include managing infrastructure or application hosting. So teams are moving to the cloud, but we've got an on-prem Octopus instance, and we want to move to Octopus Cloud and then move from an on-prem deployment to a web server, to a cloud deployment, to a cloud provider. So let's take a look at what we're gonna try and migrate. If I take a look at this instance, you can see that it's quite simple. I just have three environments, dev test prod, and two listening tentacles. If I jump to my projects, I really wanna start with this simple one, random quotes. If we take a look at its deployment process, we can see it's simple, it's just running a database upgrade script and deploying a web app. And this is currently going to Microsoft's IIS web server. If we take a look at our variables, you can see we have some app settings as well as database and web configuration. So let's go back to our projects overview and access our project export. So how I do that is on the project screen, I access the overflow menu and I select export projects. I'll point out this that this is an early access feature, but we'd love for people to start trying it. We use it internally at Octopus and it works great, but we know there's a lot of different types of data out there, which is why we'd like additional feedback. I'll also point out that is, this is a very safe feature to try because it's non-destructive. If an import or an export fails, it will simply show an error and it won't overwrite any data. It's been written very defensively. I'd also point out that it's a good idea to read our docs because there are some limitations on what is imported or exported. So having read of that is very useful. And I will point out a few things as we go through this example. With that said, let's go ahead and do an export. So here I'm going to select random quotes, the project we were looking at, and I'll give it a quick password and I'll click the export button. You can see there's two artifacts here. The first is a zip file containing an export of all the artifacts for the project and its related components. The second artifact is a list of packages used by the project. The reason these aren't included in the export zip 
is because this could make the export unmanageable. Some customers have small packages, others have some that are hundreds of gigabytes and larger. So you can use the package list. And if you jump to our docs, we provide a script that you can run to help migrate those files to another Octopus instance. The one thing I'll point out is that Octopus Cloud does have storage limits. However, we have revised them with this release, so they are very generous now. Check the description below to read the release blog post to learn more about that. So I'll just download these two files. And now we can move to the cloud. Now we're looking at my Octopus Cloud instance, and I'll point out that I'm actually using the free version. If you go to octopus.com slash pricing, you can see that you can get either a free cloud hosted or server version of Octopus for free for up to 10 deployment targets. And that's what I'm using here. You can see that I currently have two projects. So I have my op self service and my Phoenix project, but I don't have the random quotes project. And if I head over to infrastructure, it's empty as well. So this is a very clean and empty Octopus instance. Now I'm going to select import projects. And this is the complementary feature to the export feature that we saw before. So now I'll select the zip file. I'll navigate to my finder, drag and drop it, and it's been added. I set a password, so I have to enter that again here and there. Now I can see a full preview of what is going to be imported. So you can see it's my random quotes project along with three environments the matching life cycle, and the project and the channel details. So that all looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and click the import button. That worked great. So now if I head over to my infrastructure, I can see that I've got my dev test and production environments. It didn't employ my deployment targets, but in my scenario, that's okay. I'm going to shift my deployment process to deploy to an Azure app service. Now, if I take a look at my projects, I can see that my project is there. I can see that my logo is missing, which is fine, but I'll fix that up shortly. If I come in here and I take a look at my deployment process, I can see my two steps as expected. Now, I'm going to go to my project settings and I'm going to update my logo. And we're back. Two things we need to do to update this project to deploy to the cloud. In this case, it's an Azure web app deployment. The first is to update your infrastructure, add our Azure account details so that we can deploy to it and add an Azure web app deployment target. And then the second one will be to update this deployment process to use our new Azure app service deployment step. First, let's take a look at our infrastructure. Now I've made two changes here. The first is that I've created an account connected to my Azure subscription. I've added an Azure account so I can connect and integrate with Microsoft's Azure platform. It can be quite complicated to configure. So I'd recommend checking out our docs. I've added a link to the description below. Now I'm going to head over to our deployment targets and you can see I have two Azure web app deployment targets here. I'll take a look at the test one. This deployment target is connected to two environments, dev and test, and has a single target role of web. Now this is quite similar to our previous on-prem configuration. So you can still think that you're deploying to some infrastructure. It's no longer a virtual machine. It's now an Azure app service. So if we look at the communication details, there's two key points here. The first is that we have it connected to our Azure account. And the second is that we specify a specific Azure web app within the related subscription. So that's our infrastructure. We've created an account and added two Azure web app deployment targets. One thing I haven't mentioned is that I did import my on-prem SQL Server database to Azure SQL. It wasn't terribly complicated, but it can take a bit of time. Now let's head back to our project to see what's changed there. I'll start with our deployment process. I didn't have to make many changes to my database updates group because it just talks to a database connection string. 
what I would like to highlight is our new Azure App Service Deployment Step. This is a new and improved App Service Deployment Step, and it has some nice benefits. Under the hood, it's built on Azure Zip Deploy technology, which unlocks a bunch of new scenarios, including deploying to Linux app services, and it adds support for container deployments. We've also made some new Octopus-specific improvements. The first is that we have a new way to configure configuration strings and app settings. You can now configure your app settings and connection strings using the same syntax as the bulk edit feature in the Azure portal. You can provide a list of app setting updates and you can still use Octopus variables with full scoping support. Now we'll take a look at our variables to see what has changed to work with our new deployment process. What we can see is that not much has changed. I removed a couple of variables that weren't required and I had to update some of my database settings, but otherwise it's very similar. So now that we've taken a look at our project, let's create a release and execute a deployment. Here we're going to deploy to dev. If we take a look at our task log, we can see that we actually executed all of our deployment work using a Linux worker pool. This is using the built-in worker pool, which previously was Windows only, but now I can take advantage of Linux workers as well without spinning up additional infrastructure. If I open up a new window and take a look at my test website and refresh it a few times, I can see things are working great. One thing I'll highlight is that if you look at the footer, the correct version and environment name are specified. So our configuration updates went through perfectly. Since our deployment was successful, I promoted our release to test in production. This means we have successfully moved an on-prem web app to the cloud. We took advantage of the project export and import feature, and we configured the updated Azure App Service deployment step. These tools helped us migrate to the cloud without a lot of pain. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below. Octopus Cloud and Server are free for small teams, so head over to octopus.com free to get started. Happy deployments!